Ecclesiastes chapter number 9. For all this I considered, all we've been talking about, eight chapters, in my heart even to declare all this, that the righteous and the wise and their works are in the hand of God. Hand of God, you see John chapter 10, 28, Isaiah 40, verse 12, and 48, 13. No man knoweth either love or hatred by all that is before them. Your motives, 1 Corinthians 4, 5. God knows our motives. God has done great things to those that love him. And God has done great things for those that don't love him. Nebuchadnezzar, Adolf Hitler, two men I can think of in history that God used to beat the Jews for their disobedience. So God not only uses the righteous, the wise, he will also use the unsaved. He used the Pharaoh in Exodus to show his great power that we read about. All things come alike to all. There is one event to the righteous and to the wicked, death. The running theme of this book, death. So if you want to run to this book of philosophy, to start a church, to start a movement, you're basing it upon death. you got a dead religion. Now Solomon is writing with a philosophy of, <coughs> of God and the word but that's always left out you know the world will quote the love of money no that's not what they quote they quote money they subtract from the word of God which has happened all the way back to Genesis chapter 3 and when you go through this book here and nitpick certain things for what you want to believe without studying the whole book and and entire then you, then you got a mess to the good and to the clean to the unclean to him that sacrifices and to him that sacrifices not as is the good so is the sinner and he that sweareth as he that feareth an oath and he that sweareth that's one he'll make the oath the one that feareth an oath he'd be very careful to make an oath that's, that's the contrast there. But what? They all die. This is an evil among all things that are done under the sun. Death. Adam did it. Not God. Eve done it. Not the Trinity. God warned Adam. Of all the fruits you can have but that one fruit. The day you eat thereof, you will die. You will surely die. The evil comes from man and his sin. When it says, I believe in Isaiah, uh, to the point that God created evil, something like that. Oh, look at that, God made sin. No, no, no. God gives man evil for what he has done in rebellion against what he said. Rebellion brings forth the fruit of evil. Had Adam never sinned, the only evil that would be would be Satan with the fallen angels. God did not create Satan. He created Lucifer. And in Lucifer was iniquity. God didn't put it there. So that all the stuff that happens under this miserable little planet called Earth, it's not God, it's man. As a result of rebelling against God, we have a curse upon this Earth. That there is one event to all, yea, also the heart of the sons of men is full of evil. And Genesis 6, 5, that's what God told Noah. That little darling that comes out of the womb, 
left to himself without correction will be a terror. He will be a mischievous little boy. And when you run that with the figs with Jeremiah, the naughty figs, it's called evil. Naughty and evil are equal to anything. Any man can be a Hitler. And any woman could be a Jezebel. It's in your nature. As a fallen race. And madness is in their heart. While they live. And after that, they go to the dead. Matthew 15, 19 are the fruits of the heart. I give you my heart. That's the worst part of your body you can give, according to Matthew 15, 19. You know how the heart is adulteries, fornication, murder. That's what you want to give your true love? Give her something better. And then all die. The wages of sin is death. For to him that is joined to all the living, there is hope. For a living dog is better than a dead lion. It's true. A dead lion ain't going to give you no, no uh, fear. A living dog, you know, you can pet. But remember, 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 to a Jew, a dog is an unclean animal. It's unclean. A lion, that falls in I don't know if a lion would be unclean. For the living know that they shall die. Do you know you're going to die? You can lie to yourself, but you're going to die. But the dead know not anything. Neither have they any more reward. Well, if they do right, if they serve the Lord Jesus Christ by revelation of the New Testament, we know that a Christian will get rewards if he does what he does for the Lord Jesus Christ. Solomon does not have that revelation in the Old Testament. For the memory of them are forgotten. And we talked about that last night. Now, in, what is the danger of this book? Verse 5 is a Jehovah Witness text. That you die and that's it. They completely refuse Luke 16. What Jesus said happens after the grave. They will run the chapter 9 verse 5 as a proof text. Also their love. Their hatred. And their envy. Their motives of life. Is now perished. Neither have they any more a portion forever. In anything that is done under the sun. Not the eternal. You didn't read verse 6. Read verse 6 to a Jehovah Witness. Life ends, yes, when you die. Everything stops when you die under the sun. You keep living after the eternal. Go thy way while you're living. Eat thy bread with joy. Drink thy wine with merry heart. For God now accepteth thy works. So God's in it. Let thy garments be always white, clean, and let thy head lack no ointment. And there's a thing about with oil we find through the Bible that you need to put on your face. Live joyfully with the wife whom thou lovest all the days of the life of thy vanity. There, there we go. Live joyfully. With the wife. Life is vain, but your wife is not. How do you like that one? So you don't work for life. 
You take care of your wife more than you take care of life. Hey, listen, if you're right with God, verse 7, and you may have an, uh, uh, a minimum wage job, minimum hours and all that, and you tithe, and, 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 and you do what the Bible tells you to do, and you try to do, God will help you take care of you, and will help you to take care of your wife too, make her happy. She ain't going to be happy if you never see her. You're never together. You're never intimate. You never buy her anything. You never take her out. <coughs> There's no joy in that. Which he, God, has given thee under the sun. So the wife is given to, to the husband. Again, again, we read that in Proverbs. All the days of thy vanity. Life is vain. For that is the portion in this life. And in thy labor which thou takest under the sun. A wife. Now Jesus said, now that some men, you know, and Paul said, to some men, their calling is not to be married. Some men have that call. Some don't. God gives them a gift of a wife. She's a gift. She ain't a, uh, uh, I don't know what to say, because I hear these guys talk about their wives and, I don't see it. Oh, yeah, I get angry at my wife. My wife gets angry at me, but I don't see the, the ridicule and the, what they say. I mean, I don't understand. I never understood that. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave, whither thou goest. Go for it now. Do it now. Because in the grave, you can't set goals. Goals don't get finished in the grave. But with nine chapters and ten verses, don't make it your complete zeal, your entire thing to serve life. You got a wife. Don't make it so you can't eat and enjoy it. I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift. Not how fast you run. Nor the battle to the strong. It's not muscle. It's your when we get, when we close this book, you'll find out it's all about God. Neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to of uh, to men of skill. Listen, we live in a day and age today. That a piece of paper is supposed to mean everything. And I'm not against education. But you know, I could go to the library or libraries. I can learn a particular trade. And what would set me back is a piece of paper. There's everything written in books today and on the internet. But a stupid little piece of paper will prevent me. They'll be, oh, we're not going to hire unless you got experience. Well, where, where do you get the experience? There are some people hired just because who they know. And you may have someone of skill. There's all series of, again, I'm, I'm lost for words, I'm on life, it's, it's not just because you know it, not just because you're the strongest, not because you're the fast, it's not because you're the best. You can be the least. For man also knows not his time. You don't know when you're going to die. As the fishes that are taken in an evil net. I don't know what the evil net is here. I mean, if you take fishes up. I assume that, you know, he's talking about fish are being caught for food. Why evil net? Maybe to the fish. I don't know. As the birds are caught in a snare, a trap, you catch a bird. In an evil time. Again, there's that word evil. When it falls suddenly upon them. And if he's talking about their life, I mean, here they're swimming along and boom, they're caught in a net. They're going to be eaten. They may die. This wisdom have I seen also under the sun, and it seemed great unto me. Now, the, now he's just said, it's not to the strong, it's not to the wise, 
It's not to the understanding. It's not to the skill. Now he's going to give you an illustration. Ready? And he said, this is what great to me. After verse 11. There was a little city. What's the name of the city? We don't know. You know how many cities were in the, in the world, I guess you can say, in Solomon's time? He says, he's not even saying Jewish. A little city. What's the name of the city? Who knows? You mean it wasn't a big name city? I don't know. There's a little city. A few men within it. That's it? It's been really a small city. I mean, only a few men is a population. And there came a great king against it. What's his name? He was a great king. What's his name? And besieged it. That means he surrounded it. Prevented things from coming in and out. No food going in. And built great bulwarks against it to attack the wall. This great king has in his heart to destroy this city. Now there was found in it, the city, a poor wise man. A poor wise man? Doesn't poor and wise, isn't that a contrast? Not according to verse 11. If he's so wise, why is he poor? I don't know. Go ask him. I don't know who he is. That's right. And he, by his wisdom, delivered the city. A poor wise man. Fought a great king. And won. Yet no man remembereth that same poor man. Where's his name? Did Solomon know his name? Or did he just know the story? Look at that. This guy delivered an entire city, a small city. Saved the people's lives against a great king, and we don't even know his name. God does. We don't even know if we'll see this guy in eternity. Then said I, well, uh, Solomon, wisdom is better than strength. See, he was a poor man. He had no muscles. He had no strength. The king did. Nevertheless, the poor man's wisdom is despised. Well, that's why he was poor. No one adhered to him. All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. And his words are not heard. But he won against the great king. The words of a wise man are heard in quiet more than the cry of him that ruleth among fools. Now, among these metropolitan theaters and all that, when was the last time you heard on the screen the real words of the, of the Bible? Yeah, but how many movies and how many interpretations of Hollywood has for the Bible? How many R-rated, X-rated, PG, G, and all those ratings are, are played on all the screens of the world? And how much is the Bible played? On Sunday morning, if you were to count everybody in a Bible-believing church, and compare that to everybody who's out at the movie theater or wherever to get entertainment. Who would be more in a majority? Uh-huh, see? Less will hear the preacher with the word of God. The words of wise men are heard in quiet more than the cry of him that ruleth among fools. Wisdom is better than weapons of war. Teach that to America. She's stupid. She's ruling God out of, out of her education. She, she's ruling prayer out of the education. And relying on missiles and, and, and computers and robot tech uh, army soldiers. But one sinner destroyeth 
much good. And what a, what a thing to close on. One sinner can destroy an entire church. One sinner can destroy an entire city. One sinner can destroy an entire nation. One sinner, Eve and Adam, can destroy many generations. That God has to step down off his throne and, and, and provide the remedy and the cure. And we are still living 2,015 years on this side of Calvary. Because of two sinners, but one for Eve. And the Bible says, there is none that doeth good, no, not one. What a thing to close on a chapter for a note today of happiness. And that will do that, close.